Hi, I'm Marlon Walker, and I'm live from Pelham's Wasteland. And today I have got another episode of a prep for you guys, showing you guys how I create the monsters or obstacles for Era, the epic storytelling game by Omnihedron Games. Um, if you have not watched the first episode or the session zero or the episode zero of my solo campaign playing with Merrick the Mighty, who is the character that we created in the first episode. You should go watch that because that has the information about how all of the system works. And I'm not going to go over all of that again, just sort of the little bits and pieces that are necessary for um, understanding what I'm doing now. Um, but I am going to go through and create a monster or rather a, essentially a series of monsters. So what I have is a dinosaur, um, character sheet. Basically this is, and this is actually going to be used for all sorts of different types of predatory dinosaurs. And that's because we have the challenge rating table, which will allow us to decide what level this is going to be. So for instance, a minion is probably going to be like one Velociraptor versus a standard could be like a pack of Velociraptors or an Allosaurus versus an elite as like a T-Rex. And the idea being that we can use the same stats for the monster, the same die ratings for everything, and uh, apply those stats to the different um, tiers so that in our adventures we can just really easily say, oh, what would be kind of an interesting thing to face? Let's just drag a, a dinosaur over and... Um, add it to the game and we can decide really quickly well what sort of tier should it be at and therefore what type of dinosaur is it going to be all of that sort of stuff and the idea is that it's really flexible so let's go to edit and we are going to i'm also going to open up the generic opponent thing so that i've got this to copy close this put in this all right so elements and what we're going to do, so for monsters, a lot of times what I do is max out at a D8 or a D10. So wolves I've got as a D8 for fury. So I'm going to make dinosaurs a little tougher. Fury D10. Apex Predator. All right, what do wolves have? I think wolves, I'm going to use wolves as sort of the the standard to measure against. So wolves have a D8 for swiftness. I think I am going to give dinosaurs the same D8 swiftness. And we're going to call that um, warm-blooded dinos. Just because I know there is some some uh back and forth within the scientific community about whether dinosaurs are warm or cold-blooded um all right presence we're gonna give dinosaurs a i don't know i think i might give them a d8 for presence i'm not sure i think i might actually no i'm gonna give them a d6 for presence a d6 for knowledge and a D4 for Esoterica. So Esoterica is pretty easy. Remnant of the in of worlds past. That fits in with our Esoterica thing. Presence. Terrible roar. And knowledge. I'm tempted to just say clever girl, like in Jurassic Park, but I'll say clever. Hmm. <laughs> hunters. Clever hunters. And I'm going to save, and then I'm also going to edit the wolf. I'm going to give it a d4 in knowledge.
and this is this is sort of how I go about this. I often kind of go back and change things, but knowledge, if you remember, has to do also with things like survivalism. So I gave the wolf a little bit better for survival instincts. All right, trappings. We're probably gonna do two. We're gonna do fury, d8, sharp teeth. And we are going to do, what else are we going to do? Um, <laughs> what could, what makes sense for a dinosaur, a pack of dinosaurs to have for trappings? Probably something with swiftness, although maybe presence. Let's do presence. E six spoken. Now let's uh, let's do we're gonna move this presence to lore. Spoken of in rumors is gonna go under lore. And then we're gonna have two others, a D8 and another D6. That's gonna make them pretty, pretty serious opponents. All right, what is our trappings? What is, hmm, I think something with swiftness. Sure, three-toed feet. So that gives us a sense that not only are do they have big, sharp teeth, but they also have sure footing, so they're going to be pretty quick and deadly, even the big ones. Um, lures. So I want... Esoterica D8, Presence D6. And I know I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to do Esoterica and then a Knowledge D6 and another Fury D6. That's going to make for a pretty deadly opponent. At, especially at the higher levels. So basically the way this works, if you remember, is you get to um, add in, so you get um, one element, two trappings, and two lores, and that creates the pool of up to five numbers that will be used for the challenge ratings. And um, so we're gonna have, we're gonna have a, a pretty, serious uh, mix of, you know, especially for like a Fury um, scene, we can do Fury D10 and a Fury D8 and a Fury D6, which will make for a pretty um, serious opponent, um, a little more dangerous than just the wolves. Although the wolves, a, um, a low level dinosaur, um, essentially a minion dinosaur opponent will be weaker than say an elite level dire wolf uh, opponent, a, an ancient dire wolf pack will be more deadly than a minion level dinosaur, even though the dinosaur has better stats essentially. So Esoterica D8, and we're gonna call this um, Fallen Kings of the Earth. Knowledge D6. Um, far from civilized lands, and then a fury D6. And that's surely going to be something like um, leaves. No survivors. Yeah. 
So that is plenty for our dinosaur. Um, that gives us, we've got all of the elements, all five elements, two trappings, we could have up to three, and four lures, we could technically have up to five, but I like doing it this way, um, not having every creature have a full contingent of um, trappings and lures, because that gives a sense that some obstacles are a little more... Um, a little more, um, shall we say, um, flexible than others. So, for instance, dinosaurs are really deadly in fury scenes, but in, like, a presence scene, they would only have, if it was, say, like, uh, presence esoterica, they would have the presence d6 for terrible roar, no trappings, and then presence d6 and esoterica d8. So if that was a minion dinosaur, like a single Velociraptor, what that would be, Presence D6 is a rating of 1, not very deadly. Esoterica D8 is a rating of 2, and Presence D6 is a rating of 1. So it would be almost impossible for Merrick to lose to this dinosaur. A single Velociraptor is really not a threat. But... In the same type of setting, let's say a T-Rex is an elite enemy, and I'm going to write this down in just a second, like I did on the wolf. Uh, T-Rex is an elite enemy, and we're using the same type of scene, a presence esoterica scene, to deal with a T-Rex. So this presence D6, that's actually a rating of 5. The esoterica D8, that's a rating of 6. And the presence D6 is there another rating of five? So that would be a six, five, five challenge, which let's go back to Merrick's stats. So for a presence esoterica, he's got a D8 in esoterica, a D8 and a D4 in presence, and then another D6 in presence. So he would have to divide up those dice to deal with the challenge ratings set by the monster under the elite level and that wouldn't necessarily be there easy you can see that even in something even doing something that this creature is not necessarily quite as good at a presence esoterica scene uh, the, the dinosaur is not as deadly of an opponent in a dino in a presence esoterica scene they're still going to be pretty effective if they're at an elite level so we're gonna go let's do the different levels so We've got Lone Raptor Minion. So if Merrick encounters a single raptor in the wild, that's just a minion level encounter. If Merrick encounters a pack of raptors or Allosaurus, so if Merrick encounters a pack of raptors or a larger predatory dinosaur like an Allosaurus, that's going to be a standard level encounter. And finally, We have Tyrannosaurus Rex, which is an elite level encounter. And so this gives us some essentially pre-generated ideas for how to use this monster, this obstacle, in the game. So you can see the wolf has the same thing. The wolf has wolf pack. There's no lone wolf um, that I, I decided not to include a lone wolf because I think they um, are basically always in packs in, in my world. Um, versus the ancient dire wolves, a pack of those is an elite level enemy, which is the same level as the T-Rex, although they're not going to be quite as deadly, because you can see the wolf, it's got a D0 in Esoterica, it's only got a D4 in Knowledge and Presence, and it's got some... Uh, some bonuses on the other places, but it's really not as dangerous as the dinosaur at the same level. And so that gives us a really interesting, there's sort of two different um, elements on the spectrum. You know, we've got essentially um, one, 
one factor or one variable that we can control that is the the dice ratings that we give to the creature and then the other factor or variable that we can control is the um particular level of the uh encounter and the result is that you can have a lot of different stuff going on you know there's a lot of customization and encountering a dinosaur is hopefully going to feel quite different than encountering a wolf or a pack of wolves in this system that's the whole idea is that encountering you know um, this particular monster versus this particular monster, you're going to have a real sense of the way that these monsters function differently because they do function differently in the system. Because this, this dinosaur, it's got a lot more even spread of uh, abilities versus the wolf. Now, the wolf has a couple more trappings. It's got three trappings instead of two, but it's only got three lures instead of four. So it's... The wolf is really built for swiftness and fury, whereas the dinosaur is a little more balanced. And as a result, the kind of scenes that we have, uh, if you have to deal with these creatures, is going to be different. That, um, you know, trying to scare off a wolf pack is going to be relatively easy compared to trying to scare off a dinosaur. That's sort of what I'm getting at is that once we when we've got these different variables, the fiction is going to change in radically different ways as we tweak these different variables. So um, I think that's going to be it for today. I just created one. You can see I've got a whole bunch of different obstacles or monsters to do. Some of these are um, creatures. Some of these are people um, of different kind of groups so like we have the northborn noble you see i haven't done yet but the idea is that once i've got all these things i can just drag and expand and essentially create a collage of what's going on in the game really really quickly and easily by dragging from this list and um, putting together all the different stuff so we can we can delete this because we're not going to be facing a northborn noble right now but um, yeah, that gives us, you know, let's say we are trying to investigate hieroglyphics on an ancient temple. Well, I've got this thing, hieroglyphics on columns. And once I've got it filled out, I'll have all the information that I need in order to make an interesting obstacle. And then I can drag it from over here and put it up on the collage and say like, okay, this is what's going on right now visually and in the story and go through the game right that's that's the whole idea is to do prep so that the game flows easily and smoothly um so yeah that is that is what's going on right now that is what i have for you guys today um i think hopefully you see how this will work so some of these i've already done like the cave the cave has a couple of elements and two trappings and three lores. So if we are in a situation where what I'm probably going to do is have a uh, set of random tables. So I'll have one random table for all of these locations and natural obstacles. And so I can just roll that and drag out the cave if we get the cave, expand it to full size so that it's part of our collage and then open up the cave and say okay this is what we're facing we're going to be facing say like a standard level cave on a um a swiftness knowledge scene right so that's describing like you know merrick is trying to move kind of quietly and stealthily through the cave and he's trying to use his kind of survival senses to sense what is going on he's trying to you know he's straining his senses at the limit to you know avoid being ambushed by anything nasty in the cave so a swiftness knowledge check knowledge d10 impenetrable darkness at a standard rating that's going to be a five so that gives us a five to work with for the monster or the obstacle 
We also have a Knowledge D6 and a Swiftness D6, and both of those are going to be threes. So we're going to have a 5-3-3 three, three scene, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to open up the Cycle page and do Cycle. Let's say this is Pathway Scene 2, Knowledge, comma, Swiftness. So what that means, let me spell knowledge correctly, knowledge swiftness, that means that this is the main knowledge scene and it has a secondary quality of swiftness. Five slash three slash three means that's the difficulty. And then I can roll against that and say, um, do this and do Merrick. Let's say Merrick gets two, Merrick two versus gm1 if merrick succeeds against two of those difficulty numbers and does the, the gm succeeds against one and then i can go statement one statement two statement three and type out what the statements are and that'll create a record of what goes on in the cycle um and the result being that we'll have essentially a, a history of our character Merrick going through this world and we'll be able to um, go back through pretty easily and look at kind of the, the adventures that we've been on. And the other thing about this is that the world that this solo game is going to be in is going to be the same world that the Shadow of the Demon Lord game is going to be in. So... Part of the idea is to essentially do some of our world building here in solo play and then gradually um, port that into the Shadow of the Demon Lord game. So like we can um, explore what, say, like the Imperial Capital is like here with Merrick and then when I get to Shadow the Demon Lord and I want to put a session in the Imperial Capital I've already got all of those ideas down and so it's really easy to um, build an adventure for the guys for Shadow the Demon Lord in that particular part of the setting because I've already done sort of the brain work behind creating that part of the setting here in the solo game. So that's sort of the idea. That's um, really what I am going for. And the other thing that means, of course, is that if you, the viewer, are interested in both games, you can sort of watch and see the ways that they overlap, because there's probably going to be some overlap. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been talking a lot. Um but there's going to be some, you know, if you're really interested in one part of the setting, you know, we might not get to it for a while in the Shadow of the Demon Lord campaign, but we might get to it much sooner in the era epic storytelling game game. And so you'll be able to see kind of like interesting things about the setting, about this world, about what is going on in um, the the known world, as I call it. And therefore, you'll be able to kind of think about what's going on. And maybe there will be connections between the two. Maybe we will see the evidence of Merrick's passing through some of these places in the Shadow of the Demon Lord campaign. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to think about it. And I'm, I'm coming up with stuff and coming up with all sorts of ideas and building all these monsters and building random tables so that I can just kind of yeah, play through really um, quickly and easily and uh, yeah, get get all of the stuff on the go, um, get everything going and playing. So thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this um, solo prep episode of Era, the epic storytelling game. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping within the week to have the first episode of the actual play out. Um, I did the episode zero with the creation of Merrick. And if you haven't watched that, you should, because that'll tell you how the game works. Um, but aside from that, we are going to be um, playing this game soon enough. So I hope you have enjoyed this episode and I hope you stick around for more. Um, 
Thank you so much for watching. I've been Arlen Walker. I've been live from Pelham's Wasteland, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.